Okay. Okay, we're recording. Okay, hello, my name is Gabriela Martinez. I'm a professor in the School of Journalism and Communications, and I'm also the department head for women gender studies. Um, I would like to start with a with a video clip that lasts about six minutes so that you get to see the last um oops. The, the students from the last class that we taught Latino Roots, which was in 2022. Um, and this will give you a sense of what students are learning and how do they feel in the classroom with the projects that they are doing and with uh, everything that they, that they learn in terms of the con context part of the course and also the hands-on part of the course. <clears throat> because this class has two components and it's a sequence course that goes winter and spring. And I'll address more of that later, but let's uh, enjoy what our students have to say about it. Mi nombre es Luis Esther Muñoz Paniagua, soy estudiante del primer año de doctorado en el Departamento de Antropología. Uh, my name is Veronica Garcia, and I am in a master's program in um, the Department of Global Studies. My name is Jose Alfredo Franquez Londo, and I'm an anthropology major. My name is Karina Gonzalez, and I'm pursuing a double major in Family and Human Services in Spanish. My name is Ruby Velasquez, and my major is in Humanities, and my minor is in Ethnic Studies. My name is Cali Tucantino Baez. I am a PhD student in cultural anthropology. Hola, me llamo Ángel Sabores Cosini, majoring in journalism communications with a minor in Latin studies. My name is Skyler Davis. I am a first year graduate student in the Department of Global Studies. My name is Anna Ventura, uh, and my major is public relations. So my name is Sandy Fernandez. Um, my major is psychology in Spanish with a minor in Latinx studies. My name is Jocelyn Flez. I am studying political science in English and minoring in global studies in anthropology. My name is Martin Alcran Trabella. I am a journalism major. My name is Paula Campos Manchor. I'm a PhD student in the anthropology department. My name is Kat Sinker Alvarez. I am a cinema studies major with a double minor in folklore and cultural anthropology. I am a third year and I highly recommend this class. I think the Latin American class is incredibly important, uh, not only for the University of Oregon, but the state of Oregon as a whole. Um, giving people an opportunity to understand who was here first in the state and, and how those people contributed to the state of Oregon. Pues este curso Latino Roots porque me interesaba conocer la historia, los orígenes, la evolución de la población latina en los Estados Unidos. Um, one of the like favorite things that I've learned is, is how to interview someone and how to kind of learn someone's personal story, just being able to ask the right questions and, and really learn how to um, share someone's story with other people. I have learned that the story you think that you're going to do in your documentary can really change uh, into com something completely different. Uh, I think that's really beautiful. Some things that I've learned are, you know, learn how to be able to handle a camera and tell a story, you know, through it. I, you know, I always obviously grew up in the era of technology where cameras are everywhere, but being able to actually use that to say something or do something with it that could, you know, tell about my history or my experience. So I took this class to better understand not only Latino roots throughout the state of Oregon, but also try and understand my own roots and how they have an influence in here. Um, being able to be in a class with students who um, are inspiring, come from the same community, same background, it's been so, it's been life changing, honestly, being in a class setting where I feel like I belong. In this class, I've learned a lot of skills in filmmaking, editing, making an interview. And this class was also very important to me to understand um, the history of Black, Indigenous, and Latinx people in the state of Oregon. And, you know, taking the Latino Roots course has been, you know, life changing. Uh, Learn about Latino history in Oregon that I've never learned about in other educational systems, right? And you know, being able to create a documentary, you know, have the platform to share these stories and you know, share with the world. Mostly, I learned about a lot about myself just because we are working on the documentary. So it made me um, look at uh, 
my story as well as my parents' story, since my documentary is based on my mother and my parents. Um, so it, it made me realize the, the correlation of their story and how that has seeped into mine. Before coming to this class, it just, I've never really had an like, emotional like connection with my project or with anything I was really doing. And coming in didn't just make me a better student, but also made me, I think, like a better friend for my subject. So I really do appreciate that um, Lynn and Gabriela were able to give me an opportunity to be able to tell his story and learn how to tell uh, other stories as well. And I think I've learned a lot over the last like 20 weeks. Um, I've not only just learned about the Latinx history in the state of Oregon, but I've also learned how to capture people's stories and how to effectively do that. The most important thing that I've learned from Latino groups is that Oregon and the Pacific Northwest at large is full of Latinx people and we make up a large portion of the population and a lot of the times there's both conscious and unconscious erasures of our history and being able to recognize what we've done is really important. So not only did I learn Adobe Premiere skills throughout the term, but I've also learned valuable storytelling and listening skills and just overall how to capture the story of a person and how to respect the story. There's been multiple skills I've learned, but one of the main one has been communication with in a professional setting, meaning when I was working with Maria Cortez, who I am making my documentary on, um, it was how to communicate with her, how to listen to her, how to hear her on her personal journey, and how to document that, um, respecting her journey here to America, um, and really connecting with her is a huge skill that I did not have prior to this class. And I feel very fortunate to be taking a Latino roots this quarter. I'm all these past reporters. Um, it's a long and ongoing process and project working with storytelling. And through this class, I've learned a lot about patience, um, teamwork, being kind to yourself while learning the technology, um, and taking a break when necessary. Okay. So as you can see, um, this is a this is a course that actually <clears throat> draws students from different disciplines. Many of them, obviously, in the College of Arts and Sciences, but uh, but uh, also from the professional schools. And uh, and the students come from different levels. You see, graduate students who are PhD students master students and also undergraduate students, some about to graduate and some others who are um, juniors or sophomores. So uh, we have like a, a, a different uh, population, if, if you will. And, and that's what enriches this course. Like we have people that are coming from different disciplines, different levels in their studies, and also different life experiences. Although some of them may identify with each other, they have different life experiences. Some are from Oregon, some others are coming from abroad, and others are coming from other states. So, uh, and that's what enriches the course in my view. Um, what I wanna do now is go through some ideas and also kind of the genesis of the project. Um, I wanted to just briefly address uh, what do we in general understand and what is my understanding of public scholarship and public facing work? I think that that's important when you are thinking about courses that will be public uh, facing or in your own work if you wanna do public scholarship. So basically, I'm not going to read this. You can read it on, on your own. I took this out of the internet, some basic definitions. Uh, but pretty much public scholarship uh, deals with um, how we as academics want to engage with the public and work together. So we are working with the community with the goal of creating and spreading knowledge together. So that it's not top down, it's not the ivory tower that we know everything 
and we're going to tell you what's best for you or what type of research we are doing on you, right? Uh, or what are we going to say about you as scholars? But actually working with that community and figuring out what are the stories they want to tell and how they are valuable and how do they fit within the framework of our own research. So it's a two-way conversation. Um, in public facing, uh, basically, as you can see here, um, different organizations, but also universities are, are doing more and more of this. And it's basically encouraging that we create policies so that we are public facing, right? That we create the environment to have a public facing stand in the community. Right, um, and, and we do that not only um, to better our relationships and interactions, but also to share and to call attention to issues that are percolating in the community. And we, as maybe experts, if we wanna use that term, can work with what's going on in the community. So for me, that's my understanding of what is public scholarship, public facing, and that's what Lynn Stevens and I have tried to embed in our course, uh, the Latino Roots course. So a little bit of the genesis, because this is, uh, most people see the end product of this, but you know, what, what has taken to, uh, for us to get to this point. We began the project in 2009, and the project began as a celebration or commemoration of the uh, birthday of the state of Oregon, when the state of Oregon was turning 150 uh, years. Uh, we partner up, and that's part of you know, public facing and public scholarship, we partner up with the Lane County Historical Society, and we work on a, an exhibition for the History Museum that is run by the uh, Historical Society uh, for Lane County. And it, it was very, very interesting uh, process because um, they thought, well, they came to us and we started the conversation and uh, Lynn and I decided to elicit the help of uh, students so we got graduate students, uh, two graduate students and four undergraduate students kind of later, later in the game, just to help us move, you know, help us collect artifacts and, and stories from people. But I worked directly with Sonia de la Cruz, who was my uh, doctoral uh, student, my advisee. Um, and she and I produced the first documentary ever in this series that it's called Latino Roots in Lane County. It was a short documentary for the museum exhibition. And Lynn with one of her students, graduate student, and then a few uh, undergrads uh, did the collection of artifacts from the community, like photographs, um, papers, documents. They had letters from family when they first moved to the state of Oregon. Some people had um, the contracts for the Bracero programs because their grandparents have come here as Braceros. So it was very interesting, you know, and that took several months, right? But the idea was to create this exhibition for the museum. At that point, we didn't think of a course, okay? Um, so, and, and the other thing that it's interesting is that they gave us a small wall in the museum. I don't know how many of you have gone to the Museum uh, of History here, the Lane County Museum of History, but it's a small place. So they gave us kind of a corner in a wall, but the community just outpours so much material that we decided, okay, we need more than that corner. And they, we basically took over half of the museum and we prepared 16 panels that now you can download copies of the panels from our website. And I wanna show you a little bit of that um, really quick. I will go here. This is our website for the Latino roots. I hope everybody can see it. I think sometimes we need to stop sharing and then reshare. Uh, Gabriel, when you share, did you share your whole um, your whole desktop or just one one application? Sometimes when you share, if you share the whole desktop, they share those things. Oh, I can, okay. actually, I can see. Yeah, it you can see it now. Okay, yeah, because I I switch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
if you go to, if you just Google Latino Roots U Oregon, you'll get this. And this is our public facing uh, platform. Okay, and we have, I mean, two ways of, of doing public facing. This is the main platform we use, but also because we deposit everything that we produce, all the student work, it's deposited on special collections here at the library, at the night library. And so people can do, you know, scholars and students, everybody can do searches through the library and find not only the documentaries, but also cop transcripts of everything, uh, you know, of all the interviews that we have. Uh, they can find the pictures, individual pictures. They can find more materials that are not in the documentary because they are deposited in the special collections. But this is the most public facing, like kind of the platform that everybody use, right? So if you go here and you go to exhibition panels, you will see there the original panels can you see it on your screen now? Yep. 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 You will see the 16 original panels and some other new ones that we added. And these are the panels that were at that exhibit in 2009, right? So that's the origins of everything. Um, and now, nowadays you can download these. If you have classes, if you are teaching anything or doing research, you can download these to your desktop and have the entire collection. Mm -hmm. And obviously as anything public facing from a university is for free. So you can just have it, right? Um, so that's uh, the genesis of that. And then um, if we go, can you see my, or do I need to switch? Need to switch. Yeah, I'm gonna switch here, screen share and go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so um, I want to talk now about the course, how we develop the course in case uh, any of you are very interested in developing this type of courses. Uh, obviously, it's going to be based on your discipline and what do you want to accomplish. We apply for a Williams instructional grant in 2010 and we got uh, the funding to develop the course. So Lynn and I spent about a year thinking deeply about how to structure this course. And we developed uh, two syllabus, one for winter term and one for spring term. So the, because this is a two term sequence course, right? So in the winter, basically the students are learning everything about, um, and I have here, you can also read here the course description. So in the winter term, uh, they are learning everything about the historical, ethnographic and documentary understanding of uh, the Latino population in the state of Oregon and in relation with other populations, you know, Native Americans, African Americans, Asian Americans that came here all the way back, you know, uh, especially for the populations that came here and start cohabitating with Native Americans, right? So why did they came here? You know, uh, how many African Americans uh, live here in the 1800s, let's say? What were the laws? You know, how they develop identity as Oregonians? Uh, so we go through all of that mapping of identity and who are the Latinos that were here early on and like Latinos who are coming now, right? And what are the differences, the generational issues? Where are they working? Where are they settling across the estate? And, um, at that uh, and, and also during that first term, we start pairing our students with members of the community. Right, so that they start getting to know people that they will be producing their stories about, right? Like the, pro the production of the documentaries. So in the spring, they go in, into full gear to produce the documentary and the life story of that person. Mm -hmm. And it takes this long, maybe for things that you wanna do, you don't need two terms, but for us, it takes all that time because we want our students to really know the history deeply so that they can have you know, a, a deep conversation 
and a good representation of the people they are filming because they are gifting us their life story, right? So you cannot go there kind of what we call sometimes parachuting journalism or parachuting documentary making, you know, like, oh, I go, I interview you and then I'm gone. And, uh, and then I'll figure out how I put your story together, right? I mean, the students go with deep understanding of the migratory process, uh, the different counties where maybe these people are living, what other communities are there, what type of work people do in different parts of the state, right? So, and the political issues with that, right? Political, racial issues. So th they go really well prepared to engage with the community. And, and I think that that's really, really important. Um, and then we have what we call community engagement. Um, uh, basically, for our students to get people and gain their trust to give their life stories, we need to use our own networks of people that we know in the community, uh, the partnerships that we have with organizations in the community, and different organizations, uh, not, only, not only when I say the community, not only Lane County, but across the state, right? And also uh, by now, because we have taught this class several times, you know, for almost more than 10 years now, uh, we also use our students, many of our students now feel really encouraged to do the stories of their own families, right? Or they ask family members, friends, people that they know in the community to participate in their in the work that they are doing, right? Uh, so it, and it's really beautiful to see that. And also we have some students um, that have done their own self stories, you know, like some students who are kind of thinking deep about the meaning of what does it mean to be a young Latinx person in the state of Oregon? What does it mean to be a second generation? Now, what does it mean to maybe be undocumented and be earning a degree at the University of Oregon? What is their future? I mean, they, they come up with these deep questions, right? And so they decide to do self, um, kind of self ethnographies or work with other members of the community. But that's a, so that's what we call kind of community engagement, how we work with other people. And at the end, uh, we have the Latino Roots Biennial celebration because we teach this course every two years. And one of the successes of this course, it's not only the engagement with the community, but also how we celebrate that partnership. And we really like to show that. Right? We really think that it's important that the university, that our students celebrate and recognize that we are not isolated producing work that will go to the recycle bin, <laughs> right? But that actually we have to celebrate with the community that it's outside the university. So we, since the first year to now, Every two years when we end the course, we end up with a big, big celebration. And actually, usually it's here in the library. And one of our partners at the University of Oregon is the library. And that's why you see here uh, Vice Provost and University Librarian Alicia Salas, um, who, you know, generously and in her first year, because 2022, I think it was her first year here, um, say, yes, we're going to continue the tradition because we began before with uh, Deb Carver, right? So we are continuing that partnership, which is really, really important. And the partnership is not only extend to depositing materials, but also celebrating together, showcasing the library as a place where people from the community can come and feel comfortable inside the library, you know? Um, the all the presidents that we have had in the past 10 years or 11 years have been participants of this celebration so we make the effort to book them in advance so by we're going to be teaching this class next year by the end of fall we are already in the books with the president for the celebration in june right so that they 
they are part of this connection with the community. They have a stake in doing that. And, and also the provost and other administrators, right? I think that that's really, really crucial for the success and also for the students to see that their work is recognized at all levels, right? Um, so the other, uh, the other thing is that both the celebration and also the, uh, the course itself is a student center. Right, so Lynn and I speak for, we, we, we are very tight with our schedule <laughs> when, when we are doing the celebration and Lynn and I speak like only two minutes. Everything else is run by the students, which is really, really awesome. Because by then, as you can see, hopefully you got the sense from the video, they are completely empowered, right? And they feel totally comfortable. You know, because the entire experience of being a cohort for 20 weeks, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And also to be under a lot of, you know, the pressure of producing a, a documentary and, and the pressure of, well, you're telling the story of somebody, right? Uh, that it's gonna be public. This is not just for me to give you a B or an A, you know, uh, or a D, I don't know, right? Um, this is something that is gonna leave publicly and it's a publication for you as a student so that that in a way that that pressure sometimes could be stressful for them but we have exercises you know like deep you know deep you have to breathe deeply you have to take a minute you spend a lot of time in the lab in the cin in the cinema lab which is also here in the library uh, that's another partnership that, that we have with the library and with cinema studies um, that we can use their lab you know, they, they are in the lab many times until midnight, right, working. So they need to learn how to take breaks, how to be kind to themselves as they are saying, you know. So, and, and that's really a student center, you know, like constantly checking in with them. As, as faculty, we have to be checking in with them um, all the time. So um, I'm gonna leave it there. That, that's my last slide. That was my last slide. And I would like to maybe show, um, I'll share with you, I'm gonna stop sharing this and then go to, to the website again. And let's see. Um, I would like to walk you through the website. So if you want to visit the website and see how you could create a course that emulates some things. Um, and, and I know that there are other, other faculty on campus that have done uh, a lot of public facing as well, like um, Julie Weiss, for example, in history. I think she has a project that it's also kind of public facing. Uh, and it has a good website, you can visit that as well. But I wanna walk you through this uh, Latino Roots website. Uh, you have the home here with the kind of the genesis that I gave you. Then you have the course description. And within that, um, you learn, you know, what is the course? What does it take? How many, um, you know, how many terms, the different partnerships that we have within campus and outside campus. And then also you can go and read uh, student testimonials that probably they are not gonna appear here because I would have to be switching back and forth. But you have the student testimonials there where you can uh, learn how students feel about their course, what have they learned. Then you have the video documentary gallery. And this is where we house all the documentaries that we have produced since day one, right? So we have, uh, as of today, we have 98 documentaries. Uh, so next year when we teach the class, we'll be going over our 100. So it's a milestone. It's gonna be a, a milestone class. And pretty much like Netflix, you can go and choose, you know, whatever you wanna watch and you have a synopsis there and then you can uh, choose what, you know, what, what you wanna watch. And 
I want to call attention to 2020 because obviously due to COVID, that was a very special year. Um, classes, if you remember, classes went online for spring 2020. So the production of the films had to be done completely remotely. And even our teaching was done remote. I was stuck in Peru <laughs> and I taught remotely from wow. Peru. <laughs> and Lynn was here and Lynn and I will you know, teach remotely each of us from our houses. It, it was a very interesting uh, experience. And it's amazing because we thought Maybe the students are going to just say collapse or quit. Oh no, I mean, they were even more eager <laughs> to do this and we got all the production. So for some of them that was more difficult to do the entire documentary um, through remote practices, uh, they produce, um, and you can see these four here, they produce more like multimedia type of things. And even one of them did a podcast. Actually, two of them did podcasts with some multimedia uh, stuff on their, on their website that they created. So that's another modality, right? And actually it led us to think as there are newer platforms that we could use that maybe we're gonna start allowing the students, if they don't wanna do the documentary, maybe they will do podcasts with the interviews and, and tell it more like a podcast story, right? Or do more multimedia things, which is really a, a nice way of, of working, right? So hopefully people will uh, go and check this out and see, you know, and also watch some of the videos that are really, really interesting and, and very emotional, some of them. And then we have the, the exhibition panels that I already uh, shown to everybody. Um, and you can download those. And the other thing is here, if you see our collaborators, these are our partners, right? So institutional partners here and outside. And as you can tell also, CELCO, it's the community credit union. They are our sponsors oh. for the Latino roots. And uh, so we have this partnership with them and they, every three years they donate some funds so that we can make this accessible across the state. So we, the panels that you can download here, we have the physical panels as well. And we have three, um, three sets of those panels. The original ones that are historical, we don't take those out anymore, but we have, um, we have uh, replicated those in, in a flexi type of version that you can fold the things and then you can just display it really quick and it's lightweight so we can ship it anywhere in the estate. And, um, we have had that exhibition across the state in different historical societies, uh, different museums, middle schools, high schools, um, fest Cinco de Mayo festivities. So basically, I mean, they go all over uh, the state and, and CELCO kind of finance that, you know, they, that we can make that accessible for free. Right. And the other thing is that our institutional partner, partner here, CLASS, the Center for Latino and Latin American Studies, um, they are the ones who administer all these panels and the, any exhibition that it's outside the university, right? So they help us to do that. Um, and so, um, so basically, I mean, as you can tell here, we have different connections, right? And that takes time, right? That didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that if you wanna do this kind of work, I mean, it is an investment. This is not something you can do it for one term and then forget about it. Um, if you wanna do it well, I mean, it will take some, you know, some research of what exactly you want to do. Maybe if you want to teach it with other uh, person, I was going to talk about that. I mean, the rewards and challenges, it is extremely rewarding. This is one of my favorite courses mm -hmm. to teach. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you ask Lynn Stevens, she will say the same. This is kind of the highlight of 
probably probably our careers as teachers. Uh, you know, I really love teaching this class because I see the transformation in in our students. Right, uh, I I I see it in other courses too, but this is like so, like deep I don't know it's something that touches the soul right um and and the other thing is that uh it's a great experience to team teach especially when you are from two different disciplines right like I'm in a professional school Lynn is in anthropology right but understanding that interdisciplinarity and how we can combine that in a way that it's successful, I think that it's um, that it's really beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. And I think people can do it across disciplines. We talk a lot about interdisciplinarity, but I don't think we do it enough. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a challenge because sometimes the uh, the upper administration doesn't necessarily allow for that, right? It's a it's economic cost and all of that. But I think that if if that gets open to other experiences, it will be great. And I think that it pays off for the university, for the colleges, for the schools, and for our students that are completely from another uh, generation, right? And they see things very different from what, what the silos that we have. Uh, so I think that experimenting more about interdisciplinarity and co-teaching uh, in the long run could pay it off even for the university. Uh, so even if it's not immediate and not, not always everything has to be in money, right? How, how many dollars we have to spend if we release to two professors, right? Because the gain is, it's much more, all right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if there are questions or, <laughs> or comments. <laughs> Your enthusiasm and your passion coming through when you're talking about it. That's wonderful. And you need to talk about this. Um, I do have some questions, but do you have any questions? Yeah. So I was wondering about um, what does this course count towards specific majors and minors? How yes. Do you, how do I set it up? Yeah. Uh, well, this is a cross listed course. Okay. Okay. And it's upper division. It's a it's a four. I think it's 426 and 427. Okay. Um, I, I have to check That's on that. Okay. I, yeah, but it's a 400 level. Is it 400 yes. Is it yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Four slash 500. Okay. And it has the, the M, which is multicultural. Okay. So it counts for multicultural, which now I think it has changed names, right? It's global. some global, yeah. global something. Yeah. So um, So it counts for that. And then students can request to count it for their own majors. Okay. For example, if you are from Iris, I think that they counted towards something inside Iris. Okay. Um, and uh, in my school, we do the same. We count towards, uh, uh, towards a particular type of electives, right? Okay. So yeah, it, it counts for, and for graduate students, it counts as one of their uh, elective courses, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, um, how many students? I know I asked you this before, but how many <laughs> students do you get in your course? Uh, the cap is twenty-five. It's a twenty undergraduates and five graduates. Yeah. And usually, typically, we end up with around twenty, eighteen or twenty, okay. because the students you know, realize that, oh, wow, well, some of them, you know, this may be a lot of work or maybe I can't afford to be two terms, you know, but uh, but the cap is 25. And then both of you, both you and Lynn are present for both terms. Yes. Really, truly teaching. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We grade together. We teach together. Yeah. Great. Yeah, in winter, I mean, she does more of the context courses, but I do some lectures as well. And then, um, in uh, in the spring, I do all the technical part, and she helps with the story uh, narrative and, and interviews. You know, like ethnographic interviews yeah. and all of that. Yeah. 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 So we we are present uh, both terms and and very engaged with the students. Yeah. How did you guys get so good at giving money? That's amazing. 
Salco? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, many years ago, uh, there was um, one of the development uh, officers who was from CAS, I believe, um, Kate Walsh. Kate Walsh. And uh, she was working with, uh, with CLAS, with the Center for Latin and Latin American Studies, and uh, to help us you know, get a donor or get some money for CLAS. Um, so he, I, she called us and, and said, you know, I think Selco is interested with something with the Latino community, but they don't know what exactly. So we had dinner with them and we explained to them the different things that class does and that we were beginning this course and, and this was our idea, you know, and then we wanted this to be for the public and not just for the university and that we wanted to send out the the exhibition that we already had the panels, right? We would like to circulate it and distribute it and replicate it so it can go to different places at the same time. And they went like, whoa, okay, yeah. So uh, so they began giving us very little money kind of to test run the thing. And as they saw how we were growing and being steady, uh, they increased the funding. And then um, we invite them to every celebration. They always come. Oh, yeah. They always come. They always come. The three of them, always three of them come and are present uh, in the celebration. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, what does that, I mean, how is Stephen Stanley involved in the class? I mean, are the, these classes so popular that the classmates or friends mm -hmm. uh, talk to each other and say you need to take this class. Yeah. So how do you advertise? Yeah, well, uh, the first two years we had to do some advertising, but now we basically have to send away sometimes the students because they talk to each other, right? And they say, oh, there is going to be this class. And they think that it's going to be every year. And so then they realize, oh, no, it's not you know, until the following year. And so they they kind of get ready. So if they are not graduating, obviously. Uh, we always advertise it in our classes. We send a note to all of our colleagues. Uh, you know, I go to some classes, but for the most part, students that we have been getting, they always say, oh yeah, you know, my friend on, who was in this other class two years ago or last year, they told me about this class and I decided that I should take it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Because in reality, they have only two, two uh, chances to take it because right. yeah. they doesn't offer. If right. the student is here for four years, yeah, and for one, if they don't find out who they're talking, it is. Yes, right yes. So it's just yeah. a very precious uh, yeah. opportunity. Yeah, so yeah. I'm lucky for those who yeah are yeah. able to take it. Yeah. I can see why you do it every year. That must be a huge investment. Oh, it's 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 very very time consuming, and and also because the, our commitment to the students, right? I mean, we really, I mean, we we even have them, you know, like on they they have our WhatsApp numbers or phone numbers if anything happens, you know. So we are constantly in communication, right? Because they are working with people in the community. We don't want them to you know, maybe misrepresent the university, but they, they have been very good. I mean, these students, uh, I mean, they, they really, they realize what they're doing and then they are really invested mm -hmm. as well, as much as we are, I think, you know, mm -hmm. for the most part that those who are not that invested, maybe drop the class in the first term. Mm -hmm. And those who stayed really until the end, they are very, very invested. Yeah, and so that takes a lot from us as well, you know, to be with them, uh, you know, some weekends I come to the lab and I just sit there with the students. Everything is bilingual. So, you know, we go through translations. We, I mean, everything has to be translated and we have to check, you know, that the Spanish is good and the English is good. And, you know, because people can be speaking in, in either Spanish or English, right? So, yeah. And all these community connections are just things you and Lynn have built up over the years? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. over the years. It's a network. Yeah, 
Yeah, and this has been uh, a lot of work over the years. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and Lynn has been longer than me here at the U of O. So she's been working with Pecun, which is in Woodburn uh, for a long time. And one thing to add to that, you know, what these type of courses do with the community is that Pecun, um, after the first time we taught this class, by the second time, Pecun decided to donate all their papers and archives to the library. Wow. So they have moved everything here. So in Pecun is the most important uh, uh, union for farm workers in the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. And all of their papers are here. And it's the result of, you know, obviously, you know, years of that they know Lynn, but at the same time seeing what we are doing with the students and the significance of having the papers here, like it's part of the assignments. In the first term, they have to come to the library and study the papers of Pekun and, and unpack one of the papers and create a story with that as a training mm -hmm. for the story that they're gonna tell, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the people who are featured in, the, in, the, in the, their videos, they come to the celebration too as well. Yes, everybody comes. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a good question, Sayo. Uh, when we have the celebration, all the students come, all the families of the students are invited, and then every single person who appears in their, that we are telling their stories about, they come, and many of them come with their families. Oh, so right. it's like a big thing, you know? Yeah. Usually, I mean, we used to do that in the browsing room, yeah. but we were against the, the fire, oh, fire, fire code or the marshal came a couple of times like, oh, no, no, you cannot, you know, it, it's, uh, you are getting, uh, you know, there's too many people here. So basically uh, the last time we had to do it in the ballroom, in the EMU in the oh, ballroom, wow. and it was packed. Wow, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. I would say easily 300 people, wow. it was packed. And do you show the documentaries at the celebration? Yes, yes, nice. yeah. So what we did uh, that time there, we rented the three rooms across the ballroom, and each room had like uh, five documentaries in each one, yeah, so. Oh, yeah. And people can walk, so we have, one hour, you know, with all the speeches from the students and, uh, and the president and the provost and all of that. And then uh, the other hour is screening all the works. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that is really nice that I think it's part of, of this engagement in public scholarship is that the students do uh, a symbolic ceremony of depositing their work with the library and they give it to the vice provost of the oh, library yeah you know, their work. Um, and then they have to give a copy to the person oh, no, that yeah. they found. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that's very emotional for many of them. I mean, you can you can tell the emotions there, you know. Mm -hmm. And and for people seeing their story and that others are seeing their story, it's yeah. it re it's really moving. Yeah. yeah. Is it an issue to get all the permissions? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, part of the process is that you have to have IRB, IRB and okay. we do have an IRB for the Latino roots that we um, that we renew every other year. Every time we teach the classes, renew it. Okay. And it covers the entire, to everybody who's doing research with us. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the students, the people are interviewing everybody. Everybody. Okay. And then we have, the, it's it's multi that's why it's only every other year yeah. because you have irb then you have um the release form for, from the person that you are filming right mm -hmm. they have to sign a, a paper that they are fine with the filming and telling their story then they have to sign another form gifting their story to the library and for public consumption Okay. okay, and then you have to have a form from the students because of FERPA, where they are gifting their work to the library and to public consumption. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. yeah.
So keeping track of those link keeps track, track of the forums. Yeah. <laughs> That's her task. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, me too, but, uh, but she's more like, yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's a lot because there are like, so we are talking about four different forms, yeah. right? Wow. Yeah. Can I have something to investigate? Uh, I do it with, um, with a GE generally. So every time we teach the course, when we are updating and uploading everything new, uh, I have a GE for that okay. from my school who helps with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And we have rebumped this. This what used to look different, like because it's 10, 11 years old. Yeah. So things have changed, right? So we had Selco with Selco Money. We actually hire, uh, you know, some website engineers to revamp it and make it more modern, more contemporary. Like you have the galleries instead of just one long list, and you have like class by class, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So they have revamped all of that and updated everything, um, and then we change all of these. Used to look different. So, and then we have to standardize with the University of right. Oregon. Right. So all of that, we, uh, we use our CELCO funds to, okay. to do it with uh, people from outside. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the main idea, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, very, very And good. it's very yeah. use friendly, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing we did when we revamped this, um, I spent some hours with the, with the, technicians with engineers who create, you know, who revamp this. It's also to make it suitable for phones oh, yeah. because not everybody uses laptops, but you can see these on your phone. Family, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And who knows, maybe next time we'll move to VR or something. <laughs> <laughs> or AR. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to be conscious of your time, yeah. and I'm going to stop here because it's all, it's 4.30. Okay. Yeah, let me stop the recording. Yeah. Um.